here is a game of Simon. Basically, it's a plastic box with four lights. Inside, there is a bit of electronics that control when the lights are being switched on or off. And basically, it's going to generate a random sequence. For instance, it will start lighting on the green light, followed by the blue, followed by the yellow light. And then it asks the user, the player, to repeat that sequence. These lights are also buttons, so the player would press the green, the blue, and the yellow. If they've got it right, the computer inside would then add an extra light to the sequence. So it may do green, blue, yellow, and blue again. And the player would have to repeat that pattern. And every time they've got it right, an extra light is switched on. Okay. Now we're going to try to do that with a BBC micro bit. However, with the BBC micro bit, we only have two inputs, which are those two buttons here, A and B. So instead of having four different lights, we're going to use the left and the right uh, LEDs, and we're going to ask the user to repeat a pattern or a sequence made of left and right, so A and B. So for instance, it's going to go left, left, right, left. Okay, uh, let's look at um, how we're going to code this. Um, we're going to use a variable called sequence, which will be a string containing um, our sequence. For instance, it's going to start with ABB. And every time the player get the sequence right, we're going to add an extra character to the string. So the second time we're playing the game, um, and if we've got it right, it's going to add another letter and so on. So let's have a look at the Python code now. To create this game, we're going to go to the Microbit website and we're going to select the Python um, editor. I've already started this. Now, let's have a look at the Python code. Um, it's quite a complex piece of code, so I'm going to try to explain roughly how this works. Okay, let's look at the very top of my code. Um, first, we start importing the library that we're going to need. So we start with the microbit library and then the random library, which would be used to generate the random sequence. Then you can declare some variables to store your images. Now remember, the, the microbit is a grid of 25 LEDs. So you've got five rows of five LEDs. And you can create your own image by saying which LED will be turned on or off. Okay, uh, nine, so this digit here is my top left LED. Nine means it's on with full brightness. Zero, my top right LED, is off. And any values between zero and nine um, is changing the brightness of the LED. So it's a fairly faded LED. This is a fairly bright LED and this is a very bright LED. Okay, that's my first row, second row, third row, and so on. And you can see that basically the pattern I'm creating here um, is to lit up the left hand side of the micro bit. I'm doing exactly the same for the right picture where I'm now turning on the LEDs on the right hand side. Um, and I've also created another picture that I will use between two patterns. I will display a little plus sign. So you can see I've used um, the LEDs in the middle um, to form a plus sign. Okay. Next, well, next we're going to create our sequence. Okay. Remember the sequence is going to be a string such as ABB, for instance. And to do so, we're going to randomly choose a character from a list made of two characters A and B. So this will pick up the first character of my sequence to which I'm adding the second character and then the third character. And every time I run this code, it's going to randomly pick three letters. So A, B, 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 A, A, and so on. Okay. Now, this is where the game logic is going to start. Um, with this game, we don't really know how many times the player will have to, to guess um, the correct sequence, because if they get it right, then they carry on playing. So we're using a while loop. While the user is correct, then we're going to carry on playing. And we've initialized correct to true to start with. Okay. This loop contains three parts. The main part is we're going to display the sequence. To start with, the sequence only has got three, three patterns, um, but that will increment um, as we progress through the game. So using a for loop, I can retrieve each character 
in my sequence. Remember, my sequence would be like ABB, for instance. So if the first character is an A, I'm going to show the picture that I called left. Remember about that? Left is the picture I've created that will turn on all the, the LEDs on the left hand side of the screen. OK, um, so if the letter, the first letter was an A, I'm displaying the picture left. If it was a B, however, I'm going to display the picture where the LEDs on the right hand side are on. And this is going to do it um, for every character in my sequence. So it's going to do it three times to start with. And in between, um, I'm showing the, the left or the right picture for one second. That's 1000 milliseconds. And then in between, I'm showing a plus sign so that we can clearly see the transitions between two patterns. OK, for half a second. Once I've finished displaying the sequence, I'm now telling the user, I'm, I'm displaying a question mark. And it's a sign that it's now down to the player to start pressing the buttons. OK, um, and I've got to find out how many buttons do they need to press. And that depends on the sequence. How many characters do I have in my sequence? To start with, I've got only three. So max input will be three. Um, so I'm going to capture um, three inputs from the user. So three times the user is going to press on the button. OK, and I'm constantly going to check whether they've got the right answer or not, because if they don't, I'm not going to ask for more inputs. I'm just going to display game over. Um, and in that, while I'm capturing events, if the button A is pressed, I'm showing what the user has pressed by displaying the left picture. And straight away, I'm going to say, well, was it the right answer? So I'm going to check. Because if it wasn't, I'm going to turn correct into false. So if the letter in my sequence uh, matching uh, the, the first letter, so it starts at letter equals 0, which is technically your first letter in your sequence. Remember, a sequence is a string, so it's a, a list of characters. So you can access character 0, character 1, character 2, and so on. So if the user pressed A, but the sequence was actually a B, then I'm going to say correct is false. And we'll see what that means later on. OK. Uh, and then I'm going to display a plus sign. And my I've, I'm going to increment. So I'm going to count how many times the user has pressed. So they've pressed once. OK, so I'm adding one to captured inputs. Same if the button B was pressed, then I would display the right picture. And I'm going to check whether they got it right or wrong. Um, they got it wrong if the letter in that sequence was an A and they've pressed B, in that case, correct, become false. OK, and same again, very similar code to the code before. Um, I'm adding one to the capture input so that it's only going to start um, to start with. My sequence was three characters long. So capture input, as soon as capture inputs become three, it's going to stop asking for more inputs. OK. <coughs> Now, if after capturing all my events, correct is still true, so I didn't make any mistake, then I'm going to display a happy face, okay, to give feedback to my user. And I'm going to add a random letter, A or B, to my sequence. So my sequence was three characters long. It's now going to be four characters long. Okay, so I'm going to keep the same three to start with, to which it's going to add an extra one. OK, and I'm giving one second delay before it's going to loop back to my while loop, which is down here. And it's going to display my sequence. So this time it's going to do it four times, not three. Then it's going to display the question mark. Then it's going to check for four user inputs. So length of sequence would be four. And if I've got it right, it's going to display my happy face and add one character and so on. If correct is not true, it's not going to display a happy face. It's not going to add a new letter to the sequence. And it's not going to loop further because my while loop here only loops while correct is true. So if correct is not true, which means if I've made a mistake when pressing the A or B buttons, then I'm exiting the loop. So I'm going up to line 74. And here I'm going to display the game of a message and the score. And the score will be the length of the sequence. So if I've got 
four letters in my sequence, that's my current score. Okay. If it's below three, I'm displaying zero because to start with, I gave three letters to the sequence. They didn't get this right, so they don't even get one single point. Okay. A bit mean, but that's the way it is. Okay. Now, once you've done all of this code, um, you can download it to your microbit using this button here and download it straight into the microbit drive and that should work. Now you will find it quite difficult because this text editor here or this code editor, Python editor, doesn't give you any indication as to whether your code is right or wrong. Okay. You will only get feedback once you've downloaded it to your microbit and the microbit, if your code is incorrect, will tell you and may tell you the line number. So it's really difficult to troubleshoot to test. The issues you may um, find is if you haven't got the right indentation somewhere, um, so if your code is not aligned the way it should be, that's going to generate a few issues, and that's typical of Python. Okay, indentation is very, very important. So once you've done it, double check that everything is lined up the way it should be. Okay, good luck with it. Um, have fun. You will find this code on my blog, 101computing.net. Okay, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and you can find out more on the blog.